Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Red Eagle Politics. Make sure you guys like this video down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. And if you ever thought that Donald Trump was in jeopardy of losing this primary, well, last night confirms that you were wrong because Donald Trump put on an epic masterclass performance in the Iowa caucuses. The polls were pretty much right. We're going to get into all of it, but he ended up winning by roughly 30 percentage points. He won 98 out of 99 counties, and the one county he lost, he lost it by one vote. That's brutal. We got to check in on that. What's going on in Johnson County? Somebody uh, decided to ruin the 99 county full grassly is what they call it for Trump. But either way, it doesn't matter because Donald Trump won big. He set a record for a seriously contested caucus. He went out there and he won by 30 points. Nobody else has won by more than 13. And this is absolutely huge. And when you take in everything into account, these people went out there and they spent hundreds of millions of dollars to get the same result that they would have gotten if they didn't spend any money. They wasted time. They wasted energy. Ron DeSantis basically abandoning Florida, moving to Iowa, Nikki Haley spending all of this money at the 11th hour, not even to come in second place, which definitely could hurt her ahead of New Hampshire, where it probably is going to be more competitive, mainly because of the fact that you have a lot of liberal independents who are Joe Biden voters who will likely be voting in that primary. It's like, yeah, Trump is building momentum, which is absolutely huge. He went out there and put on an absolute statement victory. I said, you know, I don't know what the percentage is going to be, but hopefully it's going to be north of 50. It's probably going to be in the 50s. And if he gets 50, it is a statement victory. If DeSantis or Haley are held, you know, below 25 or so, that is a statement win for Donald Trump. And it absolutely was. We heard so much talk about, oh, but DeSantis has a really good ground game, this, that, and the other thing. And oh, the enthusiasm. Well, the enthusiasm was still with Donald Trump. And that's the way it is. I mean, you look at this. You had all these mega donors backing these other candidates, many in the media we're propping up these other candidates, but it did not matter at the end of the day. And the polls were pretty much right. They said that Donald Trump would win by 33 and change, and he won by nearly 30 percentage points at the end of the day. And when you look at it, it's just like the people that were saying the polls would be off by 35 points, they just got completely just dumbfounded. So many people actually thought that DeSantis had a chance in Iowa, and he honestly never did. And the win is more impressive when you look into it, not just the fact that the guy went out there and won by 30, won 98 out of 99 counties. Yeah, that's part of it. But still, this was during a snowstorm. And while I did say that the snowstorm could benefit Trump, apparently it turns out that it didn't. Because even though Trump's base was the most enthusiastic, Trump's base overall, is usually the older Republican voters, usually Gen X and some millennials. These were the people that were supporting DeSantis and Haley. And when it came down to like the Zoomer vote, it's not a big portion of the electorate. The entrance poll showed Trump not doing well with them, but I think a lot of that is just because of the presence of Vivek, who dropped out, by the way, um, when it comes down to that. And that's another huge thing, because if you combine Vivek's total with Trump's total, that's huge. Because you look at New Hampshire, New Hampshire is going to be razor thin. And we know that New Hampshire is going to come down to possibly the wire. And you look at that in New Hampshire, Chris Christie dropped out. You have all these liberal independents voting in it. That five to 10% of the electorate that's supporting Vivek, they're all going to come home to Trump, which is absolutely huge and would possibly push him above the 50% threshold that he is going to need. Because Ron DeSantis is pretty much irrelevant at this point. The fact that he's staying in the race is just an absolute pinnacle of the delusion that his campaign has. Because this guy moved to the state and he lost support. He spent all this time and money propping up his image, and he lost support. I guess people just didn't like what they saw, and it shows. This is exactly what we've been saying for the past year, and last night, it all came true. It all unfolded, and it just gives Donald Trump all the momentum that he needs moving forward to go out there and 
defeat Haley in New Hampshire, defeat Haley by a lot in Nevada and South Carolina. But it's like Ron DeSantis, is he even going to get in second place in another state? Seriously, that's the other question. And we hear all this talk about electability because the new cope from these people is, oh, Biden won last night. Really? First of all, Trump polls better against Biden than DeSantis does. And it turns out that the polls were pretty much accurate. And possibly they would have underestimated Trump if it wasn't for the snowstorm uh, lowering turnout overall. But you look at it and it's like, DeSantis moved to another state, spent all this money. He visited every county. He lost half of his original Iowa support. I mean, seriously, the guy was polling, uh, you know, before, I guess the polls only here go back to May, but even before that, he was polling in the 30s. He was beating Trump in some polls in Iowa after the midterms, and he completely collapsed. And he can blame whatever. You can blame the indictments for boosting Trump, but also DeSantis handled the response to literally everything poorly. It's not just the indictments. That might be part of it, but it's not the entirety of it. And it shows as a reason why he ended up being neck and neck with Nikki Haley, of all people, who is also insufferable and is completely a disaster on the issues. And it turns out that Trump, he's going to have to go more on the offensive against her because she's the one that's going to be intending to stick around in New Hampshire. If Donald Trump even wins New Hampshire by one vote, this primary is over. It's entirely over. It's already over. It's been over for over a year, it seems. But now, yeah, that would officially be the nail in the coffin. And DeSantis, if he doesn't drop out after New Hampshire, he's definitely just insanely delusional even more so than he already is at this point. He's not even going to get second place again. He, if he stay, if these candidates all stay in until Florida even, he's not even guaranteed second in Florida at this point, the state that he's governor of, the state that he won by almost 20 points in the governor's race back in 2022. It's absolutely hilarious to see, but Donald Trump, he's still got the party behind him. And what's their new cope? Oh, well, he only got 51%. Iowa was one of his worst performances in 2016. The caucus definitely attracts a different crowd than your average primary. And also, how much time did Trump spend in the state and money compared to all of these other people? And a lot of these people that voted for DeSantis, even those that voted for Haley, and definitely pretty much everybody who voted for Vivek, is going to be supporting Donald Trump in the general election. That's just the way that it is. Donald Trump went out there and he won big. And honestly, when you delve into the numbers and you look at the big picture here, honestly, it's a little bit more impressive. And the fact that DeSantis is not dropping out, given his weak performance, oh, it's second place, it's a victory. No, it's not a victory. You lost by 30 points in the state where you put all of your eggs in that basket. Trump didn't put his eggs in Iowa. Trump is focusing on winning the general election right now. He went to Iowa a few times, and that's partially why he was able to win by the margin he was. But if he put as much time, money, and energy in Iowa as DeSantis did, he probably would have cracked, you know, 66 plus percent of the vote. He would have got two thirds of the party on his side. And he probably is going to get more than that in a lot of these primaries after New Hampshire, especially because Vivek Ramaswamy. He dropped out. He's endorsing Trump. He's going to campaign with Trump. And even though some people that like Trump are skeptical of this guy, and it's fair to be skeptical of people, you have to admit and understand that Vivek Ramaswamy is an absolute workhorse on the campaign trail. He almost did the full Grassley twice. He basically, uh, you know, went from somebody that had no name recognition to somebody who's a household name and got, what, 8% of the vote in a caucus against a former president and against the governor of the third largest state and somebody who's like the donor class's darling in Nikki Haley. So you're looking at all of that? Yeah, Vivek is a hell of a campaigner and he does have a base and combining his base with Trump's, it just moves the primary process along even further than it already is. And that's the way it is. Donald Trump, Iowa, one of his worst performances in 2016. It was never closer than 13 points for a non-incumbent but he went out there and he put on a 30-point masterclass victory. It's phenomenal to see. And there's a lot more of this to come. There really is. I mean, given the snowstorm, given the fact that a lot of elderly voters didn't turn out, because there's no early voting in Iowa, Donald Trump still performed in line with the polls. He still won by 30 points. He went out there and got it done. Absolutely epic to see. 
and that's the way it is. And the faster this process moves along, the better, because you can unite the party. Donald Trump, he reached out to supporters of those who did not support him in Iowa. He even congratulated his opponents. He, you know, won with grace. We love to see it. And that will speed up the unification process as well. So you're looking at this here. Donald Trump won big. We move on to New Hampshire. It will be taking place one week from today. We'll have to deal with the whole uh, electability argument they use against Donald Trump because it will collapse in real time. And we know that all of these other people don't have what it takes to win. They can't beat Trump. They can't beat Biden. And last night proved it in the state of Iowa. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Like this video down below. Comment down below. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media. The links are all in the description down below, and I will see you guys in the next one. Red Eagle, out.